So I came in and I explained the process of what we're gonna do. Like, congratulations, this is great. You know, you're coming in. Your, how long has it been since your surgery? He's five days post-op. Oh my God, it's like a dream, right? You're like, thank the Lord you came in early. But whatever you see on that first day is going to tell you what potentially could happen, right? Not all doctors are created equal. Not all patients are created equal. Uh, people's bodies respond a little differently, right? And and I know um, ethnicity plays, plays a role in terms of scarring and that kind of stuff. So he's five days post-op, his small finger. So we already know. So these are the things that are kind of going through your head, right? Zone two, no man's land. So in your mind, you should already be thinking, this is a hard area and I need to tell him as such. Along the way, I need to tell him as such that this is a hard area and this is called, no, I always say it's called no man's zone for a reason. I always say that when you when you cut what's called a zone two, um, you cut both tendons usually, right? What else is going on in zone two? I always, I'm like, what else? What else is going in zone two? You touch the tip, why? Because you want to know if it's numb. Is it numb? Because it's the, the PIP, right? If zone two, PIP, you're always thinking, could it be a digital nerve because of this? No man zone. Do you have numbness? Do you have numbness in the tip of my, oh no. And this guy was great because he didn't have any pain. I'm like, perfect. You have no pain. So in your mind, like in your mind, you're already like, okay, dude's like, he's like this Russian dude. He's like tough as nails. But I always think, okay, zone, you know, this guy has no pain. So I'm like, perfect. If he has no pain in my mind, I'm already thinking like, yeah, I want to be able to move him, right? I'm going to be able to move him faster because he's got no pain. No man's land, I'm already thinking, I want to talk to him about how difficult this is. So don't bullshit me, don't tell me you can't come to therapy, I need commitment, right? I'm not a wham bam, thank you ma'am kind of girl, I need some commitment from you. This type of injury takes work. I know that it looks like it might not be that hard, it looks like it's only one finger and you still got it attached to your body, so you might think that it's not that bad, but this is called no man's zone for a reason and it's because tendons, if they get stuck, you're going to need another surgeon. One of the things that I want to help you do is to prevent it. If you, if you um, are too aggressive because you think this is nothing, you can tear your tendon, right? You can rupture a tendon and that's going to most likely require two surgeries because you have to have the, the grafting, um, you know, with the rod placement, and then, then they do another one, then you have to wait so many months. So I'm trying to avoid more complications because I don't want you to think that you can do stuff and I don't want you to not do anything because if you don't do anything, you need one more surgery. I must have mentioned it in the hour that I worked with him like six times, by the end of the session, he was like, I'm not going to rupture it. <laughs> I'm not, it's not gonna get stuck. <laughs> so, but I like on that first day, like I drill it in, I drill it in, numbness. So he came in with a post-op dressing that was like this. So he was unfortunately ulnar deviated, flexed, and then this was his finger, right? Now he was in uh, probably about 20 degrees of flexion. So in my mind, I'm thinking, well, if, was it intentional to be flexion or sometimes, you know, they just get casted that way. So I always check that if he doesn't have any numbness on the tip um, and the doctor didn't include it in the prescription, it just said Durant. So this is how vague the flexor tendon zone two Durant. That was, that was the script, right? And I, I, you know, it said twice a week, but I follow my own protocol. I, well, not my own protocol, but my my um, frequency, um, whatchamacallit, or recommendations, uh, based on what I see their need is, right? Not that I'm disrespecting the doctor's prescription, but I'll tell them why I recommend more or why I recommend less. But he came in and he, I was like, oh, do you have any numbness? No, no, no. So if he doesn't have any numbness, 
and I, I mentioned, I said, well, I didn't see anything about a digital, like a nerve repair. Do you remember hearing anything about, did you cut the little nerve on the sides of your finger? Cause that's what's gonna cause some of your numbness. And he said, no, I didn't cut the nerve. Like I have full sensation, perfect. I don't need to worry about keeping his finger in flexion because he's five days post-op. The small finger already, I'm telling myself. So if it's a zone two, he cut his um, um, superficialis and he cut his profundus, right? So it's the profundus here where I'm not allowed to block. Right, so that's just a little key indicator in my brain. I'm not gonna be blocking the small finger and all that good stuff. So his finger came in really fat and it came in like this incision. So you can always tell the incision, it's like zigzag, but it went all the way down his palm. So that told me that when he cut his finger, his um, tendon retracted down a little further and usually they have to find it. Sometimes when they find it, they just do a little cut like this, and then they go searching for it, but he might not have been able to find it, so the, the incision is like much longer. So the bigger the wound, you know, the thicker the swelling, I start thinking wound care, right? Wound care. I start thinking about the quality, um, the quality of his repair, but also his potential recovery, right? Quality, and then I think about potential. Potential. All right, such a terrible stellar. All right, so I make his splint. Does anyone have any trouble making the splint? Because I was gonna go over some of that today. Um, about the splint but I one of my first things I want to do is I'm gonna clean out his wound right so I talked to him about because I started to take him out of the splint and then he's already starting to move his fingers and I'm like dude please don't move your fingers you're not allowed to move and how someone is within the first minute or to five minutes when they're with you is how they are all the time you know so he like think about it like whatever you see in the first several minutes like judge your patients like okay if I see them doing something that's how they just are like this is a young active guy like he's kind of he's kind of like oh whatever type of guy it's like I got this I can do this this is not hard um so I, that's one of the reasons I started to see him move his fingers already and I'm like please don't do that you're gonna rupture your repair right so I go into the explaining of it but wound care wise I want him to close within two weeks time right so he's already at five days and now he's got stitches so I want to remove stitches within um, you can remove stitches within 10 to 14 days right but his his um his skin I wish I could have taken a picture but um, sometimes it takes a patient like a visitor or two before they get really comfortable with us and allow us to take pictures so um, his skin was kind of like bunched up right so normally it's okay so sometimes so you'll see their incision and it'll be like they the doctor does it real tight and it's bunched up and a lot of times somebody will say oh is there something wrong with that there's actually nothing wrong because as you move you're going to flatten out that scar but if it was just barely touching as you move it's going to stretch out right so that doctor repaired that skin real tight so that he can really move but he was all like kind of crusty and I don't know what this guy did but he he um, ripped one of his stitches out so already that told me <laughs> yes he ripped one he was like oh I was taking the dressing off and it just ripped out I'm like dude you had to do a lot to rip that off like a stitch doesn't just come off especially how tight this doctor had it <laughs> so um, so he had a little stitch up here that was um, off but otherwise it was fine but he was real tight his finger was fat and swollen and swelling when you are when you have a lot of swelling you're also at risk for a rupture you know especially at the very first week you know at seven to ten days so i had to really caution him about being really careful but i cleaned up his wound i took a i take a four by four i usually take them into the bathroom with me and i'll show them how to wash their hands 
So you can take off this splint, do this in the shower. You just keep your hand um, down, your wrist down, and then you can wash your hands. So if they come and they, um, if they're showering, their, their arm is gonna hang down. And so they'll just wash inside a little bit. As long as they relax their fingers, they're fine. But if you get them to bring their wrist down, it can wash in between the fingers. That's so important to wash in between the fingers because it can get real nasty. Uh, so I always joke with people like, I don't want your hands coming in smelling like feet, okay? My hand therapist for a reason. So, um, so you got want to make them wash in between, and then you also want to tell them how to dry in between, right? So I use gauze to dry as well, and then um, they just pat dry it right here, right? Um, but yeah, I wanted to wash how crusty it is because I wanted to see if, if a wound looks dark and black and you can't see underneath it, that means you don't know how it's healing. So I cleaned him up. It looks really good. The darkness that I was seeing a lot was the doctor with this, the, you know, a Sharpie like me. And then he cut over his Sharpie. So then the Sharpie just stayed. Um, but otherwise the incision looks actually really good. So I talk about, I want wound closure within two weeks time. Next week we'll be able to take the stitches out based on if they look good. If they don't look good. You can leave them in longer, right? You don't have to take it off um, if, if it looks real open. But I looked at the quality of um, his motion and pot the potential basically. So this particular doctor does a strong repair and there's a new, there's a new um, like suturing thread now that what they do is they anchor it with a little bit of a wire. And so they can look into an x-ray and say, is that uh, stitch intact where it's supposed to be? So they can make decisions on if there's, um, if there's gapping or, or not in the tendon. So when I tell you that flexor tendons are not just about therapy, like the repair has to be done well in order to, you know, have the potential in the therapy, right? So if they repair and there's a gap in between, there's always going to be that lag that they get where they can get passive, but they can't get active. Hey therapy friends, it's Huang here. Thanks again for watching my video. And if you like videos like this that can help you just crush it in the hand therapy world as an occupational therapist, then hit the subscribe button and enjoy the video. Thanks again for watching.